Hello everybody, I'm Lori Whitlock and I'm going to show you the Silhouette Studio software in a nutshell. If you've never worked in a design program before, Studio can look a little intimidating at first, but once you learn what the software can do and what all these buttons mean, it can be very fun and rewarding to use. This tutorial is meant to be a brief overview to help you get started in the software. If you've used Studio before, hopefully you'll pick up a few new tips along the way. When you open Studio, you'll see a screen that looks like this, with a blank cutting mat ready to start a project. The first thing you need to know is how to open your preferences. You'll see a little gear icon down here in the right hand corner. You'll notice that that brings up a preferences window with a lot of different options. I suggest that you take a look at these and set things up for your workspace the way you want them. For instance, you may want to change your preferred unit of measurement. And there's a lot of other settings that you'll want to take a look at here. The next thing to note is that when you hover over a button, the software will pop up the button name. So if I hover over the print button, it will say send to printer and send to silhouette. All of these buttons up here on the top left should look fairly familiar to you. There's um, save and print and undo. Um, a couple of my favorites to note are over here in this zooming section. There's this little hand that's used to pan or move your page around in your window. And the other favorite is this fit to window. If you ever get lost on your when you're designing, you can just click that button and it'll bring you back to your home screen. There's also the double little arrows over here to close any windows that are open here on the side. Down the left side of the screen, you'll see the drawing tools. I won't be going over all of these, but I'll show you the most commonly used items. The first one here is the draw a line tool. Basically, you can click that tool and start drawing a line, and it will go in any direction. However, if you press the shift key, it will constrain it to 45 degree angles. The next tool down is draw a rectangle. You can click and draw a rectangle of any size and you'll notice um, this is the select tool at the top. When you select that image, it shows you the measurements on the side and at the bottom. You'll also see these four corner nodes. That is for resizing or reshaping your rectangle. If you use the corner nodes, it will keep it proportional. If you use the side nodes, you can change the proportions of it. And if you use the little green handle, you'll notice the little arrow that comes up. That will allow you to rotate it. And again, if you hold the shift key, you can get it um, to 90 degree angles. I don't believe, well, does it stick? It does stick to 45 as well. So you can um, draw that. Um, another thing to note is if you'll hold down the shift key when you're drawing it, you can constrain it to a square. Okay, the next tool down is a rectangle tool with corn, rounded corners and you can control those corners by holding down the shift key and it will change the radius of the corners. You can grab just one of those nodes and you can change the whole shape of your, of your piece, which can come in really handy. The next tool is the circle tool. Again, draw an ellipse tool actually, and you can draw a circle by holding down the shift key. Okay, these next tools are a little more for free handing and getting a little more creative with your drawing. Give them a try, they're really not that hard to use. The next tool that I love is the text tool. You'll click on the tool, click on your page, and then you can um, type any word. So I'm gonna type love. Um, I can change my font. Actually, you need to double click it in order to change the font. You can scale your word, and then you can go over here and change your font to anything. And I'm going to choose a, um, let's choose a script font so that you can see what we need to do. If you're going to create a word that has a script font with overlapping pieces, you actually have to right click and you'll notice this whole menu of items that come up. Um, these are super handy, so keep your right click handy. Um, but you can weld that together and turn it into um, a piece that can be cut out of vinyl or paper or whatever material you're using. That right click can also help you send things to the back and front flip things horizontally and vertically. This is a really handy menu. Most of those tools in that menu are also found down here in this little quick key set of icons here. So you can use your right click or you can use some of these for grouping and ungrouping and sending to the front and back. I usually like to use my right click. That leaves us with one more set of tools here across the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and close that window. Um, I will not be going over all of these tools as well, but I'll show you the ones that I use commonly. These first three tools are for filling an object with a color, a gradient, or a pattern. And we won't be talking about the next four tools, but the next tool is one of my all-time favorite tools in the software. You can select any object and create an offset. 
So it's perfect for creating a mat of an object and you can control the distance. You can also create an internal offset, which will allow you to create a mat towards the inside of an object. Um, it's a very handy tool and I think you'll really enjoy using that one. I'm gonna go ahead and undo those actions. And we'll move on to the next two tools, which are changing the line color and changing the line style. The line style can be handy if you'd like to create a dashed line or create some sort of a perforation to fold a card. Um, we've already talked about the text tool. This just opens the text style window. Um, this is the move tool and rotate tool. Honestly, I don't use these functions too often. I typically use the rotation handle here and I just move my objects where I need them. But if you need specific increments, you can do that here. Um, the next tool is the scale tool. This comes in very handy when you need your objects to be specific um, width and height. You can just fill in the numbers here and click apply and it will um, change the size of your objects. The next one is a shear tool. I don't use that one too often. The next is an align tool. Love, love, love this tool. Take note of this because this is another really handy tool. Um, select two objects and you can align them both to the center, to the left or the right, or any combination of the things here. The next tool is the rotation and replicate tool. You can duplicate items. So say you wanted to duplicate this to the right, you'd click duplicate to the right or you can mirror an object say you wanted to cut this out of a heat transfer material you can mirror it to get it backwards I'm not going to talk to about talk about the nesting window the modify window is a very handy window to be familiar with you'll probably need to just open it up and play around with the tools here notice how they're grayed out until you select two objects and now you can apply these modify items to the two objects. You can weld them together, you can save only the piece where they intersect. Like I said, go ahead and play with those tools. They're easy and fun to use. Just make sure you have two or more objects selected whenever you're working with those. The next tool is the trace window. Um, you can trace objects that you find or draw and put into the software. Uh, that's a whole class in of itself, but that is where the button is. These next ones um, allow you to change the page settings and turn on print and cut registration marks. Um, just a quick tutorial on that. If you wanted to do a print and cut, you would need to change your page width to eight and a half by 11, and you would need to go to your registration marks window and turn your registration marks on to Cameo. You'll notice the shaded area. You may not place anything in the shaded area when you're doing a print and cut. You can go ahead and send your um, file to print, and then you can cut it out. The next window is the grid window. You can turn your grids on and off. These next two buttons are for the Curio, so don't worry about those. Mine are here because I've installed a Curio on my computer. Um, the next window is the cut settings window, a very important window. This is where you set up all of your settings for sending a file to cut to your machine. So you'll notice everything in bright red is going to cut. There are different combinations that you can choose here. You can choose to cut all the pieces or you can just cut the outer edges. Um, you can set it up for cardstock, vinyl, different settings and it will tell you your blade setting and it'll tell you your speed and thickness. You can turn on double cut if you think you need to double cut it if you're using a really thick material and then you can send your file to Silhouette. So that is pretty much a rundown of Silhouette Studio in a nutshell. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great day. Bye-bye.